Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139. State Representative Adam Nalen of Pewaukee is a Republican seeking re-election in the 98th Assembly District. Adam, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. First question for incumbents, if you're re-elected, top priority in the next session? Well, I think, you know, the world has changed a lot uh, over the past few months, but I got to say my top priority will be continuing to provide more opportunities and growth for small businesses and workers uh, to improve their condition to make sure that they're able to provide for their families and have a lot of good uh, opportunities to, to prosper and grow in the state of Wisconsin. Well, when you talk about small businesses and workers, you know, one of these things that's being discussed in light of COVID is if small businesses have done all they can to meet the guidelines of the CDC, they should have immunity from frivolous lawsuits. Do you agree with that? I do. You do? Okay. What, can, can you elaborate a little bit? Sure. I mean, I, I think that if they are meeting the guidelines, if they're doing their best to protect you know, their workers and also uh, you know, their customers, uh, you know, we, we live in a world right now where the science seems to be changing uh, regularly in terms of when we first uh, found out about COVID, the, uh, you know, the CDC was saying, don't wear masks, make sure that, you know, the healthcare workers and people have masks and, and, and don't. And now, you know, some of these guidelines are changing and it's hard uh, as a business owner uh, and somebody living in a community to, to stay up on that. And if you're doing the best uh, that you possibly can it, it, with, with the best knowledge you have to, to protect uh, your customers and your workers, I, I think there should be certain protections for you uh, as long as you're, you know, working in good faith. Thank you. Um, let's walk down some, some other issues, Adam. Uh, we're all waiting on the Fiscal Bureau analysis of state tax collections. The governor has said uh, GPR tax collections could drop by as much as $2 billion in this fiscal year. Um, I think the strategy is to come back after November 3 and redo the budget. Um, if we do lose $2 billion in general, fund, general tax funds, do we cut spending or do we raise taxes and fees? Sure. Yeah, I, I think that the main priority we're going to be, have to be doing is get more from state government for less. Uh, okay. So I think that probably the best solution uh, is to look at ways we can trim the size of state government, maybe combine, streamline different agencies, try to get more for less. Uh, but I think, you know, it, and if you want to do certain, generate certain revenue, I, I don't think the way to do that is necessarily to raise taxes. Uh, but maybe we look at certain exemptions, uh, eliminating certain exemptions in the past or making it simple in terms of uh, a, a more fair way of doing it to, to make sure that we're meeting the challenges. But I, I think the number one thing we need to do is just look at the overall budget and look at ways we can trim like a lot of families and a lot of businesses are being forced to do today. Adam, we know a lot, unfortunately, about how some police officers treat those in custody than we did three months ago. The governor's nine bill package ban uh, no-knock, ban ch chokeholds, uniform standards for to train police officers. Um, do you support the governor's, uh, any, part of, any part of his package? Yeah, I think there was a Republican legislation that it was done in a bipartisan fashion uh, either a session or two ago to ban no-knock. Uh, you know, and I, I think that, you know, I, I would be supportive of looking, looking at that. You know, I, I don't want to micromanage how police officers do their job. They're in incredibly dangerous situations every day. And it's easy to armchair quarterback some of the ways, you know, looking back, oh, well, they should have done this, they should have done this. Um, but I think it's important that we are supportive uh, of police officers because they have a very dangerous job and, and able to keep our communities safe. Uh, but I do think there is, you know, so, some issues in there that I think can be bipartisan, like the no-knock warrants. I think that makes a lot of sense to uh, make sure you know you're protecting people's civil liberties and, and part of that is uh you know having a warrant and making sure that you're knocking and explaining that you're a police officer you have a warrant for their arrest or, or whatever for a search uh so i think that would be a, a good place to start on that package of a bipartisan uh path forward 
let's talk about legal uh, legalizing marijuana. El, uh, uh, State of Illinois just did. They're building a huge, uh, huge uh, dispensary just south of the Wisconsin border. Do you support legalizing both medical and recreational, sir? I would be in favor of looking at different ways, uh, potentially for medicinal. I think that, you know, when you're looking at, you know, recreational, I think that's a step too far for me at this point. And one of the reasons is when, when you look at the arguments that some of these states are making or some of these advocates are making, uh, it's a revenue issue. And, and I don't think that that's a smart way to set public policy is that we should do this because it will generate additional revenues. You know, I, I think we need to be looking at the public safety, the public health. What does that mean for, uh, you know, driving? Uh, what, what is the testing? And also, when you, when you take that step, you have to create an, a, a large government agency because a lot of these states have uh, had to go back and say, oh, we need to, you know, regulate this. We need to, like, what is the THC level that people are putting on in their packaging? You know, how do we test that? How do we make sure that, you know, that there's not too much THC or there's not enough? So, you know, I, I think that, you know, we need to be slow and deliberate about this. I think, you know, there has been uh, some work done in previous sessions, including last session about potentially uh, exploring ways to do medicinal marijuana. And I think that would be the logical next step opposed to just jumping right into recreational. Let's talk about reapportionment. You know, the constitution says the party in power will draw the next congressional and legislative lines. The governor would like a people's commission to draw the lines and then forward them to lawmakers. Uh, you see any reason to, to change the, uh, the, uh, the way the next set of lines are going to be drawn? I, I, I don't, and in particular because we do have divided government now, right? So we, we will have, I mean, Governor Evers is not up for re-election. He'll continue to be the you know, governor of the state of Wisconsin when we're drawing these lines. So it will have to be approved by the governor. And I think we do have the situation in place now where, you know, I believe the Republicans will keep the legislature. The governor will be uh, the governor and we'll have to come up with some sort of bipartisan solution for maps. You know, if, if there is a way that we can work together on that, great. Um, but I don't necessarily think we need to blow up the system and, and start all over. Uh, anytime you have people making decisions about political maps, there's going to be politics involved in it. And, and whether it's a people's commission or um, attorneys or lawyers or politicians or judges, anytime you have a human element related to the map making responsibility, there's going to be politics involved. Uh, so I think we do have a system in place where, you know, we have to work together by definition because the governor is going to have to sign our legislation. Uh, so I think the current system in place uh, should work. And I, I don't see that we need to blow it up and start over. Thank you. Two questions on property taxes. Um, because Wisconsin is a high property tax state, there are caps, uh, limits on what local governments can levy in property taxes. If you're reelected, do you think these caps should stay in place or is it time to get rid of them? I do think the caps should stay in place. You know, I, I think that at all levels of government, we need to try to figure out how to do more with less. And especially at this time um, where we're expecting businesses, while we're expecting individual families, while we're expecting everyone to try to work through uh, this crisis and this pandemic and, and their take home pay is down, uh, you know, daycare is, is out and a lot of, and we're expecting more from people. And I think as government officials, we need to step up to that challenge and also take on that burden of, of trying to figure out how to streamline, uh, how to maybe furlough or how, what do we need to do to do more for less. And I don't see that, you know, just spending more or allowing locals to spend more is simply, you know, the solution to all these challenges. Well, follow-up question. Do you think local governments deserve a chance at all alternative sources of revenue? Uh, you're aware Representative Mako called a public hearing on Milwaukee. They'd like a, 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 local, a local option sales tax. Uh, another plan floated is you end some of the exemptions in our 5% state sales tax to give local governments more uh, options. Do local governments need more revenue options? Potentially. And, you know, within Michael's plan, you know, ending some of the exemptions, uh, I think that that makes some sense, you know, uh, because, uh, you know, we have a very complicated tax code in terms of what exempt, what's exempt and what's, what isn't, especially in a grocery store. It's unbelievable. You know, peanuts might be exempt and peanut butter might not, you know, it, you know, it, it's, it's complicated. And, 
there is some validity there. Um, but, you know, in, in my district, you know, in Waukesha County, you know, we have the ability to to raise sales tax uh, and they don't, you know. And so I think that, uh, you know, we have provided some options uh, for governments. And, and now you're looking at uh, the Miller Park sales tax is going ended and now there's a $4.3 million surplus that's going to be going back to counties. Uh, so I think looking at things like that, um, being creative, thinking outside of the, the box, you know, I, I think you know, there is some validity to that, you know, but I don't necessarily think that the option sh- should be, well, how can we, how can we allow them to raise taxes and where? Okay. Um, this debate over, uh, we have not yet found a stable source of funding for our highways. Governor Evers was willing to raise the 30.9 cent gas tax last session. It didn't happen. Um, where are you on raising the gas tax, sir? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I don't want to be a, a broken record here, but I just, I can't really get behind ideas to raise taxes at this point, especially when we're looking at, you know, people, you know, livelihoods are at stake in terms of their take-home pay, some people out of work. I don't think it's responsible to be looking at ways to raise taxes right now. However, uh, you know, the Republicans in the Assembly two two budgets ago uh, did have a proposal to generate additional revenue by putting a sales tax on gasoline, um, you know, and, and that was uh, not approved in the Senate. So I think we have done some things to step up to the plate, but I think we need to get a little more creative in terms of uh, how we look at this um, you know, one of the things that I propose is relooking at the Blue Sign program. Uh, the Blue Sign program, you know, everybody knows they see those advertisements on the side of the road uh, advertising, you know, uh, this restaurant a half mile away. Uh, well, we outsource that for maintenance in a marketing company from Florida recoups all those revenues. Now we are losing that revenue. And, and I think that at the beginning of this uh, Blue Sign plan, I think the thought was, okay, we can outsource this so we don't have to hire people, so we don't have to worry about operating. Well, it's not very difficult to operate the Blue Sign program. It doesn't take a lot of work. You could probably do it with one or two people in the DOT. And also, it's obviously a revenue source, or then we wouldn't have people bidding on it in the first place. Like People are making money. A private company is making money off of advertising in, on our streets uh, for businesses in Wisconsin. So I think if we when that contract ends, if we bring that back into the DOT, actually have the ability to generate revenue off of that, that could go into the transportation budget. You know, we could look at potentially uh, naming rights to different freeways or bridges or construction projects. I think we need to be a little bit, um, think outside of the box and be a little more creative about how we're looking at generating revenue as opposed to simply saying, all right, let's raise a gas tax because the gas tax is high already. Uh, Adam, I, I have a follow-up question. The blue sign issue. Do you know how big a contract that is with a Florida firm? Um, the the contract we don't pay them anything for the contract. We simply say we we uh, allow people to bid on it. They come in and say this is what we're going to do, and and so the companies that advertise mm-hmm. on those blue signs, they're making that revenue. So they, you know, if if a sign needs to be changed. If they, they're selling it, so all the maintenance and the operations they pay for, but they right. generate that revenue. So I don't believe we're paying anything uh, like a dollar figure, but we're losing those revenues because we're not doing the work ourselves. Okay, and you don't know how much, uh, how much in revenue we might be losing, correct? I don't, but I would say it's in the millions. And okay. I also think it is absolutely lucrative because you had multiple companies bid on it uh, when it came up three years ago. So if it was, a, if it wasn't going to make generate revenue or if there is, you know, it wasn't going to generate a substantial amount of revenue, you wouldn't have these private companies bidding at it in the first place. If there wasn't a profit, you wouldn't have seen those bids, correct? Exactly. Well, uh, a related question should, when, when a local government, a school or a, a local government wants to authorize a public works project, should they be required to give a preference to Wisconsin companies? Um, a study found in 2015, out-of-state contractors got 72 million in these public works projects. That more than doubled to 146 million in 2018. Should local governments have to give a preference to Wisconsin companies? You know that that's a great question, and I would like to say that you know, in terms of the contract and the bidding process, I think we have a lot of flaws in, in our process. Just 
full stop right there. There's some problems. Uh, and I think that the idea that we simply provide the bid to the lowest bidder has ended up costing us money in the long run in terms of not, you know, equating quality or experience uh, within that bid. Um, but I do think there should be a portion of how it's decided should certainly factor in if it's a Wisconsin company. Uh, you know, I don't think that should be the sole reason we're hiring um, a, a contractor, you know, or a company to do the work, but I think it should factor in. I think that it should be part of the equation when you're looking at experience, you're looking at quality, you're looking at price, and you're looking at location. Where is this company located? Uh, among other factors that we could also consider in the bidding process, you know, but I do think that it should factor in absolutely. Um, the pandemic has not only, as we discussed, hit uh, local and state tax revenues, it's put a strain on our health care systems. We've seen hospitals in Wisconsin and nationally in the front line of responding to the pandemic. Um, my, here's my question. If you're reelected voting on the next state budget, should hospitals get be an even greater priority than they might be in the current budget? Well, hospitals are, are always a priority. I mean, when we look at you know, our role as legislators, I think we take public health and safety very seriously. You know, um, I, I think that we, I believe the portion of the CARES Act federal funding is going to hospitals, you know, so I believe that they're, they are getting some additional funding right now, but absolutely, you know, but when you start ticking down all the things down the list of next budget that's going to need additional funds, I mean, sure, that could be one of them, but there's a lot, you know, I mean, we're seeing a potential crisis in childcare. You know, like there's, there, we see a lot, there's a lot of issues and a lot of things that we really need to address in this next budget. And unfortunately, like you alluded to earlier, our revenues are down quite substantially. So, you know, uh, while of course hospitals are, are a priority um, and public safety is, you know, number one, uh, we have to take all of these factors into consideration when we're looking at the next budget. And unfortunately, there's probably not going to be a lot of industries or areas where we're able to substantially increase our spending. Thank you. Final question. You've got a primary challenger on August 11th. You want to highlight differences with your uh, challenger? Uh, not necessarily. I think, you know, I, I understand why somebody would want to run for this office. It's a, you know, it's an honor uh, to serve the people in 98th Assembly District. Um, I do believe that I have some unfinished business in the legislature and I do have experience. You know, I'm a small business owner, uh, family man, and I'm the chairman of the jobs and the economy. And currently our state's under a lot of pressure. You know, we're under a lot of stress right now. We got a lot of challenges that we need to figure out. And I think having somebody with experience, having somebody with a history of getting results, uh, having history of somebody who's able, able to work across the aisle uh, and, and, and chair an important committee that's going to be responsible for uh, responding to a lot of the issues that are affecting workers and small business and just industries in general. I think it's important to have somebody with experience and have somebody that knows uh, how to get things done and navigate Madison and also represents their constituents well. I think I've done a good job. I think I deserve another term, uh, but ultimately that's up to the people in the 98th Assembly District. State Representative Adam Nalen of uh, Pewaukee is a Republican candidate seeking re-election in the 98th Assembly District. The primary is August 11th. Adam, thanks for talking to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you, Steve. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Campaign 2020 is sponsored by Wisconsin Hospital Association, Quick Trip, Wisconsin Counties Association, Wisconsin Realtors Association, and Wisconsin Operating Engineers Local 139.